What I'm going to be doing today is home wine making. It's too big a subject for a quarter of an hour. So all I'm going to do is one of the recipes I do, which is elderflower wine. It's quite a simple one, quite straightforward. What I want to get out of today is the first thing is why would anyone want to make their own wine? Tesco, Sainsbury's, they're all full of wine. It's not that expensive. So why make some? So the first bit I want to get to is motivation. And then quickly, I've got some of the equipment here, some of the ingredients, how I make it. So to start with, motivation. I've got some handouts. If you look the front page, ignore the table on the top with the purple line in the middle. And it's the table underneath is the first real motivation. If you look at it, it's just a list off of an organic website of the additives that commercial winemakers used when they're making wine. Can't go through them all yet, I don't know what some of them are, but if you look at some of the chemical names there, it's a little bit scary. So if you just have a quick look through that, and the first motivation really is that what I'm going to use is all natural ingredients, there's no real chemicals used. So, in theory, it should be a lot safer. So what I use, if you just flip through to the back, you'll see some very, very dodgy pictures. It's not a subject that's dodgy, it's the set of my printer. It suddenly decided to do brown as purple. So some of you have got quite nice pictures, some of you haven't. The top right-hand one is actually the elderflowers. I don't know if any of you know what elderflowers are. Yeah, have you seen them outside? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, so they're almost a weed. Elder bushes, elder trees, they're not a lot of use for anything, but they're everywhere. So the first ingredient is elderflowers. Oh, I did forget. Have any of you ever made homemade wine or ever drunk any? So I have a complete audience who don't know anything about it. <laughs> so I'm just going to put here. flowers and there's a zero. Don't worry about the zero. So that's the first ingredient, the elderflowers. The second one, just normal granulated sugar. What I'm going to do to or tell you about today is enough for a gallon. Um, that's a two kilo bag, half of that. So I had a look on Tesco's website and sugar was, it worked out at 88p a kilo. So you might know what this is coming to now. The other ingredient is just lemons. Two or three of those, they're quite big, so two would be enough. Once again, I had a look on Tesco's last night. A couple of lemons. Was 40p. The only chemicals I do use well, that's not a chemical, that's just yeast. If you want to have a look. Um, I'll open them up. Probably for health and safety, I shouldn't let you touch them because that one is an irritant. So if I just have a walk around and have a look. So the yeast just comes like that. It's dry yeast. <laughs> <laughs> I told you it was dangerous. <laughs> so it's dry yeast. All it is, it activates as you add it. To the mixture and the nasty one in the other tub is called sodium metabisulfate. So I use that purely for cleaning and sterilizing. Okay? Yeah. Well, I wouldn't smell that one. Yeah. It smells quite strong. That's just used for cleaning and sterilizing. A uh, couple of spoonfuls of that in a couple of litres of water. The bucket there, which I started off in, you just swirl it around there in a few times. If I'm using the Demi John, swirl it around in there, wash it out with clean water, and that's it. So there's no actual chemicals in the wine. Right, where have I got to? Boom, boom, boom. Oh, prices for those. They come in big tubs. You can leave, use them um, uh, for several batches. So sterilizer. 10p, yeast, 
that tub will last for ages. Tempe. I think that comes to £1.48. That's a gallon of wine. So that's six bottles. Six bottles, £1.48. Very roughly 25p a bottle. So for me, that's a huge motivation. <laughs> um, our local wine ale, the plant place, they do a bit of food and drink. And a bottle of elderflower wine in there is £7.50. I do actually, this is for a gallon, I make it in five to ten gallon batches. So it lasts us nearly the year. So the actual process of making it, oh, there's one, one little other motivation which I'm not too sure about. I've read about it. Um, they say, like you can with honey, if you eat honey from around where you live, the bees have been on the pollen where you live, so it helps with hay fever. Yeah, that's mm. So it's the same thing. There's, I've read it with elderflower wine. If it's the elderflowers near you, it's the pollen near you, and it's supposed to help. It's homeopathic. I can't say whether that works or not. So this is the ingredients. The elderflowers I haven't got. They're only on flower in May, so they're now turning to elderberries. I would put half of the sugar in there, the lemon rinds, which adds the flavour, lemon juice, pour boiling water on it, and then just <coughs> leave it until it cools down. The temperature is quite critical for the yeast. It's got to be between 20 and 25 degrees centigrade. If it's any lower than that, it's not warm enough for the yeast to work. Any higher than that, there's a danger of killing it off. So, elderflowers, lemons, sugar's in there. As soon as it's cooled down, somewhere between 20 and 25, just a teaspoon of yeast on the top. Put the cover on. Only cover it very loosely to start with because the first fermentation when the yeast is turning the sugar, starting turning the sugar into carbon dioxide and alcohol, um, it does need air to get into it. How much so, do you, you fill that up to? Yeah. I've just put a gallon in. Right, sorry. So this is just the very start of it. Right when it needs a lot of air. So for two or three days you leave it like that, that's quite a dramatic reaction. You quite often, just with a gallon in here, will fill up to the top, just with bubbles. You let that die down a bit, calm down a bit, and then the demijohn. Have you seen these before? Demijohns? Yeah, yeah. yeah. So that's a gallon. All I'll do then is put that in top. Tip that into there through a strainer of some sort, either a kitchen strainer or some muslin, something like that, just to get all the flower bits out and anything else floating around. And then the bubbler goes on top. Like that. That's half full of water. So we now need to keep the air out. So this is producing alcohol carbon dioxide, and it lets the carbon dioxide out just by blocking out and the air can't get in. Then you just leave it. The elderflower one, I don't know why, is a very slow fermenting one. And most often take about a month to ferment. The elderflower takes anything up to three months. And I have just forgotten something. When I did the first starting off, and I put the sugar, lemons and everything else in, I use that. It's a hydrometer. If you, can you just pass it around? You can all have a look. If you look at the scale with the black writing, there's two scales. Ignore the red ones. And that just drops into the liquid. And where it comes to a stop, where it floats in the liquid, you can read off the scale. And that tells you how much sugar there is in there. It's the figure on the front page of the handout again. The one with the purple. Can you see the table? So I normally make mine with the kilo of sugar, the gallon of water, will be somewhere about 1.8, 1.85. So it gives you what? Final alcohol content, just to the right. So the 1.8 specific gravity will give you somewhere around about, it's 12, 11.5-12% is what I normally make. Okay? The hydrometer you also use, as it's fermenting, Keep checking it. As soon as it's gone to 
1.000 or it usually comes below, that's finished. So you're keeping an eye on this, when it stops bubbling, no more carbon dioxide, you know it's come to the end of the fermentation and check it with this to make sure it has finished. If you look on the pictures again, the dodgy pictures, once it's finished, there's a picture there of a demijohn sitting on top of the bucket, and that's called racking it. So it's just a wine making term. So you rack it from the demijohn into whatever you want, into a bottle, and the bag there, because I do 10 gallons a time, I store a gallon in a demijohn and then just rack a gallon from the demijohn into a gallon bag. So it's on tap, which is a bit dangerous, but it is quite pleasant, especially on a barbecue. Um, the bottom right hand picture, you'll see there's an intruder. <laughs> While I was taking the pictures, that's my rescue dog. And it's a pity she isn't all in there because that's a crossbred. Alsatian Jack Russell, Aww. and she's a rescue dog, and um, wants to be involved with everything in this <laughs> Alright, that's about it. I've got a sneaky little test. <laughs> <laughs> ah, Tristan, I want your advice. I read on one of your posts, dyslexia, black on white isn't good. Yeah. So I actually came up with this. And I wondered if this is any use at all. So I found a website that said yeah. a cream background is quite useful. Yeah, it's just the offset, it just gives it, it's just something it's firm a green, to put yeah. it on. It's a green type, alright? Yeah, it does. You'll see later on. That that's yeah, because I have got I have got some of our staff are dyslexic, mm. and what I do at the moment is what tests we have to do with them. I read it through to them. Mm. Where at least I can just give them a piece of paper mm. like that and they can read it easier, it would be better for them. Yeah, yeah, good drills, mate. Yeah. There's no need to fill these in. We'll just go around the table one by one and take a question each. So, Ian, if you could do question one. Um, the answer is Annie, I think. What's a hydrometer yep. used for? It's to help find out the final strength of the wine. It's a bit of a sneaky question, that one, because there is yeah, well, there's possible two of them. see as well, isn't yes. it? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. More, eh? Yeah. yeah. Laura, what have you said is going to be wrong? <laughs> <laughs> I think it's, it's C, I think. Is it a? That's it. C. Yeah, C, rapid. What would you think of the gallon of the golf container? A gallon John. That's right. Give me John. B. Yes, 20 to 25. If it's, as I said, if it's any cooler than that, the yeast will just stop working. If it's any hotter than that, it'll probably kill it. And lastly, Thank you. yeah, any more? For me personally. Yeah. You personally, be. Anyone else got any ideas on the last one? Is it just a. cost, or is it? I can't say it's Yeah. Yeah. Okay. You've all passed. Excellent. Um, so we have to make it in May, so we work out how much a drink over the year, make it once in May or the end of July. And it's, it's ready about Christmas. It's ready it about does, Christmas. It takes a long time to ferment, so it's okay. not really finished till August, and then it takes, I don't know why it takes quite a time to clear. If you do make it, and yeah. you're having a job to clear one, yeah. if you keep racking it, it helps. And so all, just uh, two, from one day we jump to another. Are you going to email me all the instructions? <laughs> are you interested? Oh, yeah. The last bit. That's it. The amount of drinks wine I drink. Yeah. Do you want to just pass it around? Unfor well, it's unfortunate and it's very fortunate. But it's not open. No, no, no. We're not allowed to. I did make inquiries, and we're not allowed to um, get sold, especially on the first session. Can you smell it? Yes, if you like. Can I smell it? After yes. Okay. okay. Yes. Down. <laughs> do you need waking up? <laughs> have you smelt this? Uh, you don't Go on. Do it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. What time do you finish? Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> we're gonna, we can have a party in the car park. <laughs> there is there is one thing about That's this. Nice. I said it's it's fortunate in a way that we can't. It's, it's a bit like Marmite. It's one of those things people either love or hate. Yeah. Wow. And people try it and. 
It's also the first sip isn't as nice as after you've had a few. Nothing <laughs> 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 um, Just a very quick question with that. The, the water that you add to that, yep. does it need to be heated slightly? Boiling. So it needs to be boiling water. Did, did I say boiling water? No. Yeah, you did. And then you have to cool it down. You yeah, yeah. So boiling water. It needs to be boiling. Boiling water gets a lot of the flavour out of the elderflower and the lemon. And it also adds the yeast. Uh, well, it needs to cool down. Right. So, okay. so boiling is too hot for the yeast. Do you just go with tap water? Yes. Just yeah. boil up a few seconds. I've, I've tried it. I've tried it with filtered water. Yeah. Don't make a difference. Right. You know, I've, I've got, got a water filter. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> After the first <laughs> sip, you, d you don't mind. <laughs> Yeah, well we're having a barbecue on the 18th of August. So you're all invited. <laughs> <laughs> right, I think that's me done. Any more questions? No. No. Okay, thank you. Very well timed. Yeah, thank you very much. Is that about right?